I don't know you guys, but the word jazz scares the hell out of me. Since I was a beginner, I always thought that jazz was one of the most complex music styles in the world. And of course, it is. Just think about the complexity of the chords and the chord progressions, the fact that you have to improvise on the spot, not to mention the years of dedication spent improving your phrasing and comping. So it looks like jazz is not just a music genre, it is a lifestyle. Now, even though I never wanted to get involved with what it takes to become a jazz player, some aspects of jazz music always fascinated me. And so over the past years, through books and teachers, I was able to learn so many things that have helped me tremendously. Now, I know that some of you want to play some jazz stuff. And so I thought that in this video, I would actually show you how to transform a chord progression from basic chords to something a little bit more jazzy. Of course, guys, I am not a jazz player, so we have to take it step by step. We're gonna start with the chords and then we're gonna add more color to the chord progression. Now we're gonna be playing over the most popular jazz chord progression, which is the two, five, one, six. If we are in the key of C major, the chords will be D minor, G, C major, and A minor. Of course, we want to change, you know, the chord family and everything. But the most important thing, guys, is that you want to learn the chord function of these chords. So the D minor is the chord two, which is the subdominant chord. The G major is the chord five, which is the dominant chord. The C major is the chord one, which is the tonic chord. And the A minor is the chord six, which is also the tonic chord. Now I made a video where I talk about chord functions, so make sure that you check it in the description down below. Of course, now that we have the chord progression, we just gotta find a way to make it more jazzy. And so we need to start with the extended chords, which are chords played with one or more extensions. We're talking about minor nine, major nine, 13th chords, but also minor 11 and altered chords. Now let me show you the first idea. It sounds like this. Now that's kind of crazy, we went from to a whole new level. So let's take it step by step. The first chord is the D minor nine, which is played with the note D, the root note, F, the minor third on fret three, the note C, the minor seven on fret five, and the note E, the major nine on the fret number five. Just strum the chord lightly, okay? Notice that I'm not really focusing that much on the right hand, I don't really care. I usually strum with the thumb. I like the tone uh, when you play with the fleshy side of the thumb. So you're gonna strum this chord and then we're gonna play this phrase. And I'm playing just, you know, a few notes. The note E and F on fret five and six. And then we have the fret number eight with the note C. And then B on fret number seven. Then we have the fret number five with the note A and the fret number eight with the note G. We finish with the fret five, which is going to be uh, the voicing of the G713. Uh, it's a G, G13 chord. It's a dominant chord with the 13th. Beautiful sounding chord. We have the root note G and the F, the minor seven on the fret number three, the note B on fret number four, which is the major third of the chord, and the note E, which is this 
lovely, lovely 13th. Now we can bring down the E to the an E flat and we're gonna change this 13 into a flat 13. So G13, G flat 13. And then we have this phrase. Very jazzy. Um, we are approaching the note E on fret five with the chromatic notes. So from four to five. And then we have the fret number three and back with the same chromatic note. We take our time, right? And then we play the C major seven. Um, it's five, it's three, five, four, five, and three. Just root note, fifth, major seven, major third, and perfect fifth. And then we have this phrase. So I'm just playing a few notes. D on fret three and E on fret number five. And the fret number six with the note F. Now this is the flat 13 of this uh, lovely A7 flat 13. It's the same shape as the G. So we kind of transformed the A minor seven, the chord six, from a tonic chord into a dominant, secondary dominant chord. And we have the note A on fret five, the root note, and then the note uh, G, the minor seven, the C sharp, which is the major third on the fret number six, and also the flat 13, which is the note F on the fret number six. Now the cool thing is that we are going to transform these A7 into a diminished chord. We're not gonna go into the theory behind the diminished seven chord, um, otherwise the video will be too long but we can uh, play the diminished shape starting from the major third of this chord, like this. So the root note of this diminished seven chord is the note C sharp, which is the major third of A. So we have C sharp on the fret number four, and we have the note G on the fret number five. We have the B flat on the fret number three and the E on the fret number five and then we're going to move this chord three frets up a minor third up so we have seven eight six and eight so we're going to put the whole thing together slowly Now the second idea is going to be quite interesting. In fact, we're gonna be playing some chromatic stuff. It sounds like this. We have, guys, so many awesome chords, right? We're going to start with this lovely D minor chord. And if we analyze the notes, I'm playing the note D, which is the root note, and the note A, which is the uh, perfect fifth. Then I have the minor seven, which is the note C, played with the bar chord. And I have this note, the note G, which is the 11th. So it's a lovely uh, minor 11 chord. It doesn't have the minor third, so it's a it's a nice, lovely chord. I really, really like it. And we're gonna strum it lightly, and then we're gonna do this thing. It's such a lovely thing, man. It sounds so jazzy. Now the target chord is obviously the G, uh, the G seven chord, right? Which is going to be played like this. Um, and I'm playing the note F on the fret number eight on the A string, and then the note B on the fret number nine, and the note E on the fret number nine, and then the note G on the fret number eight on the B string. 
it's kind of an awkward chord and it doesn't have the root note on the bass that's the reason why it sounds so different and so the first thing just memorize the shape but we're going to approach this chord chromatically chromatically from the fret number five so just you know uh, keep the middle finger as the reference note so we're going to start with the middle finger on the fret number five five six seven and eight so it's kind of a pretty cool thing to do so it's and then chromatic phrase on the bass on five four and three you can kind of slide into the note and then what I did um, you can do the G13 and then the G flat 13 and then the C major 7 so the C major 7 is the same but we're gonna change the phrase we're gonna have the phrase on the fret number 3 and five and then we're going to finish with the a minor nine which is a lovely chord it's a bar chord on the fret number five and then the e string for number seven again I, I like to strum the chord lightly um, and then the melody on the fret number five so we kind of move things around a little bit and then we're going to transform this a minor nine again into a dominant chord um, with the diminished chord, so we're gonna do it twice, and this diminished chord is the same diminished seven chord that we learn here. It's just we have the root note on the D string now, and we have the note G sharp. So we have the fret number eight, nine, eight, nine, and we can play the A string on the bass. It's such a lovely and beautiful chord and we can move this chord a minor third up so from fret number 8 to fret number 11 so 11 12 11 12 so when I put the whole thing together Let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor guys, Skillshare. You know that I love Skillshare, I've been sponsoring it for a while on this channel and it's just a great platform. It's the online learning community with thousands of awesome classes. Now the reason why I love Skillshare so much is because it's a place to learn things and I am a guitar player, I'm a guitar teacher and I teach you things. So when you come to my platform, you learn about playing the guitar. Now, when you go on Skillshare, you can learn so many different things. I mean, there's almost a class for anything that you want to learn. Now, it's amazing to go to one place and have so many different classes, and I learned so many things. I learned how to make my videos look better, how to light my video properly, how to expose uh, you know, my camera properly, but I also learned how to organize myself, how to improve myself, which is always good, especially if you work on YouTube, if you are a YouTuber and you teach online, there are so many things that you have to do. So it's great to find so many tips on how to organize your daily life. Now the cool thing is that you can access all these classes for free. Click the link down below to access Skillshare Premium for free for a limited period of time. And then if you like it, you can sign up for less than 10 bucks a month. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Of course, guys, we made it all the way up to this high position here. Huh? So the example number three is gonna start in this position. So we're gonna have a D minor, D minor add nine chord, I believe. Uh, we have a bar chord on the fret number 10 and the major 9 on the fret number 12. It's only three strings. So we, we are barring three strings and then the E string is on the fret number 12. And then a phrase. And then the G7. So the phrase can be played on just one string. And 
and it's 13, 12, and 10, and then 8, and I resolve back to the G7. Now this is a you know straightforward G dominant 7 chord, nothing special. We have the note G on the fret 5, and then the note C, uh, D on the fret number 7, the F, and then the uh, the B. So it's 5, 7, 6, and 7, root note 5th, minor 7, and major 3rd. However, we're gonna change this chord again with the diminished chord, and one cool thing about the diminished 7 chord is that from the chord 5, we can bring the root note one fret up like this, and there we have it. We have the diminished chord. So we have, and again, we can move it a minor third up, right? So we have six, seven, six, seven, and then nine, 10, nine, 10. Now we are in this position, so we wanna play the tonic chord, the C major seven down here and then we move back so that's one of the most popular major seven chord shape we have starting from the root note 10 9 8 and 7 and then we'll go um, to position 1 and play the C major 9 how lovely right so the C major 9 is played with the notes C E B and D. So it's three, two, four, and three. And then we can finish with this lovely phrase. Now this one you know, this is supposed to be the chord six, which is the A minor seven. And we are playing the melody on fret three and five, and then all diminished seventh chord. Uh, we're gonna start with the fret number five. So five, six, five, six. And then two, three, two, three. And then we change set of strings, and we have four, five, three, and five such a beautiful thing so the whole thing and then we're gonna finish with the two five one so we are about to end the chord progression so let's just play the D minor so we're coming from this chord we're gonna play so the phrase is very simple we have the note D on fret 3 E on fret 5 and F on the fret number 6 and then we play these uh, D minor 7 chord. It's a little bit more stretchy than the D minor 9 because we have th uh, 5, 3, 5 and 6 and then the phrase on the fret number 5, 3 and 5 and then the G7 chord. I'm only playing three strings fret number three on the E string, the fret number three on the D string, and the fret number four on the G string. And then I'm gonna play this augmented triad. I have G, I have B, and then I have the D sharp. So it's five, four, and four. And we finish with the C major 7.